by uh, Xiantung Yu from the Ohio State University. Uh, thanks for the introduction. So a network represents entities as nodes and their relationships as edges. Examples are social networks and organizational networks. And the old node link diagrams and the GCC matrices are the two most popular methods for visualizing networks. Previous work has shown that the node link diagrams are generally good for visualizing a sparse networks, while GCC matrices are more effective for dense networks. And a GCC matrix shows how nodes are connected through the intersection of the corresponding row and column. When the connections are undirected, the association matrix is symmetric with respect to the main diagonal. In other words, the same information is shown in both the upper and lower triangular matrices. So for undirected networks, which representation should we use? Square matrix or triangular matrix? This is still an open question. And also, since many real-world networks are naturally dynamic and have multiple attributes, how to visualize multiple matrices is another open question. Previous work by Beck projects a 3D space-time cube into a juxtaposition of matrices. Also known as small multiples, this design has been shown effective for visualizing uh, many visualizations such as scalar plots, blind charts, and bar charts. It relies on the user's memory to make connections across the matrices. Well, in spite of its popularity, is this side-by-side -side juxtaposition the most effective, or is there any benefit to introduce more juxtaposition designs? To answer these questions, we performed two controlled experiments in this work. We first evaluate the effects of matrix representation on graphical perception tasks. We evaluate three possible designs of matrix juxtaposition in the context of visual comparison. With the guidelines obtained from our studies, we present a compact visualization called tile matrix to visualize a large number of networks. Now let's look at our first study. Well, we have two representations, a square matrix and a triangular matrix. The study was conducted as a within-subject experiment with two experimental conditions and 10 repetitions. We follow the conventions of perception studies in using synthetic data to allow control over the experimental data sets. The synthetic networks have varying number of nodes, density, and communities. 20 users participated in this study. The study focused on graphical perception tasks. Task one asked users to find the number of communities in the network, which represents an overall use case of network visualization. Task two asked users to find the most connecting node, which requires browsing through the representation to find the information. Task three asked users to make judgments once they locate the specified targets are the two specified nodes connected in the network. We know that talks two and three were also used in previous studies. Correspondingly, we have three hypotheses. First, if we look at the shapes of the communities, they are either squares or triangles in the two representations. We believe that squares and triangles should be equally easy for perception in the two representations. Second, to view the neighbors of a given node, we, one can scan through the rows of columns in a square matrix by following an L-shaped path in a triangular matrix. We expect that following a straight line in rows or columns will have better user performance than following an L-shaped path. Third, a square matrix encodes connection between two nodes twice in the representation, while a triangular matrix represents a connection exactly once. We predict that the square matrix will outperform the triangular matrix for confirmative search. Here we report the average completion time and accuracy in the left figure 
and the results of a NOVA analysis in the right table. As we know, p-value that is less than 0 0.05 indicates significant difference. Looking at the p-values, our results did not show any significant difference between the two representations. For tox one, users were able to interpret communities in both representations. For task two, it seems that users did not become significantly slower when following the L-shaped path to view one of those neighbors. Users commented that tracking neighbors uh, was a little bit hard at the beginning, but their, uh, but their speed got faster after the training trials. For task three, users performed equally well in the confirmative search. Therefore, only the first hypothesis was confirmed. Now let's move on to our second study. In our previous study, we found that square matrices and triangular matrices had a comparable computation time and accuracy. So we did not consider square matrices in this study and focus on comparing the triangular matrices of different juxtaposition designs. As mentioned earlier, the conventional juxtaposition design is to put representations side by side. Basically, the same representation is repeated multiple times without any modification to the design. We further propose alternative designs for matrix juxtaposition. One is called back-to-back -back juxtaposition, which reverse the order of rows or columns in one of the two matrices to form a symmetric composition. This design is motivated by human symmetric perception, which has been shown effective in computer-aided detection. For example, radiologists take photos of breasts by X-rays and put them in such juxtaposition to view the differences for cancer detection. Another design we propose is called complementary juxtaposition, which takes two triangular matrices together to form a compact square matrix. This, the positions of cells in the two matrices are symmetric with respect to the main diagonal. This design is a variant of the back-to-back -back juxtaposition and only applies to triangular matrices. The experiment used a three by three within subjects design with nine repetitions. We follow the design choices we made in our first experiment. So for each synthetic network, we randomly assign several nodes to a different community and add edges for randomly selected nodes. The original and the new matrices were then grouped together using one of the three juxtaposition designs. 28 users participated in this study. Our three tasks modified from the uh, first experiment were used in this study. Given two matrices in one of the three juxtaposition designs, we asked users to determine whether the largest community has the same number of nodes whether the most connected node has the same number of neighbors, and how many times the two specified nodes appear in the matrices. So we hypothesized that the back-to-back -back and complementary juxtaposition designs will all perform the side-by-side -side juxtaposition design in tax four and five. So we believe that the mental alignment due to symmetric perception we help to connect the patterns and real differences across matrices. While comparing a specific token in task six requires locating the same item across matrices, we predict that the three juxtaposition designs will have comparable performance in this task. Here present the results of our second study. And we highlight the results of significant difference. As we can see, the juxtaposition designs are significantly different regarding the completion time. On average, the side-by-side -side juxtaposition took significantly longer time than back-to-back -back and complementary juxtaposition. So this is also true for task four and five. No significant difference was found in task six. So based on the results of our two experiments, we provide several guidelines for designing matrix visualization. First, the triangular representation does not seem to hamper graphical perception of matrices as long as the viewer learns how to interpret the representation. Second, the mental alignment due to symmetric perception seems able to connect the patterns and structures across matrices 
which helps visual comparison of networks. Third, since complementary juxtaposition doubles the data density compared to other juxtaposition designs, we believe it can better utilize the display space for visualizing multiple networks. So with the design guidelines, we present a compact visualization called tile matrix. It is inspired by the physical act of laying tiles on roofs and floors, which is pretty common in our daily life. So in our design, one tile is a triangular matrix. Multiple tiles are placed in either complementary juxtaposition, back-to-back -back juxtaposition, or side-by-side -side juxtaposition. So in other words, the tile matrix couples the three juxtaposition designs to display a large number of matrices in a compact manner. So for example, let's consider a collection of basketball players who have multiple performance attributes such as points, rebounds, assists, and so on. An important task is to compare the performance of players in different facets and also over time. To achieve this, we first transform the performance that is data into performance networks where players are connected either strongly or weakly based on the similarity of their performance. Then we visualize the performance networks using tile matrix. Matrices of different facets are tiled horizontally, while matrices of different time steps are tiled vertically. The color of self connections is set gray. Matrices of nearby facets are colored similarly. The opacity of a cell encodes the similarity of performance between players. So what can we learn from the tile matrix? Suppose we want to compare the performance of players regarding different facets in a specific year. We can focus on one row of matrices in tile matrix. For example, we can see the facets of TPA and TPM have similar patterns. In particular, one player behaved differently from the other players in these two facets. So if you're interested, our, our paper has detailed analysis of such findings. While alternative design matrix tiling is to only use side-by-side -side juxtaposition, which we call it tile matrix, uh, seed matrix, sorry. So in this design, each tile is a basically a square matrix. To evaluate the design concept of matrix tiling, we've observed six users viewing tile matrix and seed matrix in an informal study. Our task was very informal, simply asking them to com comment on their understanding and visual comfort of the two visualizations and how easily they could find interesting information. So as initial feedback, all six users were able to understand tile matrix as well as seed matrix. One general feedback is that the cell in seed matrix is much smaller and less legible than that in tile matrix. This is because the square matrices take double space compared with triangular matrices so each cell in seed matrix is displayed in half size of that in tile matrix. Some users reported that the tile matrix requires more training effort to follow the L-shaped path, which is consistent with the findings in our first study. So last but not least, let's discuss the limitations and future work. As we have mentioned, the triangular matrix only works when the connections in the network are undirected. Our experiments consider a small set of generic tasks for, visual, for matrix visualization. We believe these findings generalize to a wider range of situations, but we have not confirmed this empirically. Also, we did not include interactive operations in our experiments, but only focused on evaluating the effects of different representations and juxtapositions alone. We would like to extend the design of tile matrix with additional interactions, such as highlighting one knows neighbors across matrices. Well, to conclude my talk, we performed two controlled experiments in this work. We first evaluated the effects of matrix representation on graphical perception tasks. We proposed several designs of matrix uh, juxtaposition and evaluated them in the context of visual comparison. We provide several guidelines based on our studies and present a compact visualization called tile matrix for visualizing a large number of matrices. Well, uh, thanks for your attention. I'd like to take a few questions. Uh, 
Uh, hi, Jen from University of Toronto. Uh, very amazing work. I, I uh, see that actually we are doing uh, similar um, uh, similar uh, research about comparison in a matrix and showing that in matrix. So one of the um, lessons we learned from the user study is matrix could scare the user because it showed too much data. And so we tried really, really hard to develop a bunch of filtering and interaction techniques to try to reduce the visual complexity. And from um, from your work, I, I see that you, you'll be able to compact, uh, to show compact realization of, of all the information, and especially the tile matrix, and it looks too overwhelming. And I'd like to uh, hear about like what's your, um, um, suggestions and comments on that uh, about about how to um, showing how to show the data at the same time reduce the viral complexity. Yeah, that's a very good question. So I think our goal of this uh, design is to give users an overview of the data. So basically, it's like a, a starting point. Without any prior knowledge of data, users can look at this visualization and like zoom into a portion of the. Uh, tile metrics and to see the metrics of their interest. And to answer your question, like uh, we wanna provide some interactions such as when user click a node, you wanna see all the connected neighbors or uh, highlight the, the uh, like clusters or communities in the matrices. So we leave that to future work. Okay, thank you. Hey, can you show the uh, tile matrix again? Back one or two slides. I just had a question about patterns that kind of extend between years. Mm -hmm. um, so just looking between 1989 and 1990, there seemed to be some repeating patterns between there. And you said that you know people were pretty good at picking out symmetries. Uh, are those valid to look at? Would a person want to brush between some of these patterns to see how things link over? Or is that something that you're worried about? It might be a problem and you need to separate things out so that people don't interpret these together. So are you asking whether there's confusion between the years? Yeah, so is there some sort of pattern that a person might pick out between years? And what does that actually mean whenever you're brushing between years? Uh, brushing? You mean well, you're not brushing in this, yeah, but yeah, you know, yeah. if a person looks between years. So you mean when users are interested in the particular patterns, how do they find the patterns? Right, across like years. Across years. Yeah. I think in this visualization, you basically just follow like one uh, column because that is for a uh, given facets is crossed years. So you just follow the path. And maybe if you are interested in some patterns, you, you just follow the uh, that column. So you don't look at the other columns. Probably that will work. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Thanks. 